where this is good stories and inspirational stories of, of parents of media in the black community. Yes. Media is the most powerful industry in the world. I agree. If you don't control your narrative, somebody else will control it. I built Revolt not just as a platform to follow in the footsteps of BET, which I want to just give a shout out to Bob Johnson. He don't have the ability to compete. The, the money that you make, you put into your programming, you invest for it. Are you talking about TV? The opportunity is it's truly a blessing. Talk about the process of selling your mind frame and then your mind frame and buying it back. A lot of black businesses get criticized when they sell. I bet on, I bet on black. That's Sean John. I bet on black culture. These throwback videos of that, that puff energy and, and it, it's, it's infectious, right? Here we go. We'll talk like about I can't, that. I can't play a part of the... Here we go. <laughs> ...from anybody. Don't steal from nobody. Not that way. But it, it's your dreams. You got to manifest it. And you got to take it with that intense energy. So as far as I believe there's like 13 black billionaires in, in America. You're one of them. It's almost an impossible feat to accomplish. Wait, hold on. Wait, there's no claps for that? That should be standing to your love, feet. Love, love, it's a love, black love, billionaire. Love, you kidding me? Love, love, love. Everybody should be up. Love, love. <laughs> That's crazy. Man, it's a lot of people. <laughs> you know where he's from? <laughs> New York. Yo, we can never, we can never normalize ah, being a billionaire. Not an everyday man. thing, man. By the way, we know almost all of them. Yeah. Also true. That's a fact. We'll have, we'll have another one tomorrow. <laughs> That's a yeah. fact. Finesse is only. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I want to be careful with that, y'all. When they talk about us having money and y'all look at us, it's, it's truly an illusion of inclusion. Mm. Talk like about I, can't, that. I can't play a part of the illusion of inclusion. So you looking here at me like I'm totally included. No, I'm fighting for the same thing I was fighting for when I got into the game, but it's at another level. And so, and so, it's very important to understand this is the truth. Out of all the billionaires in the world, the world got almost 9 billion people in it. There's only 16 black billionaires. So that's the illusion. So every time, you know, yeah, it feels good for one of us to get in, two to get in, but we, but, but we got to stop taking the crumbs. It's time for way more of us out of 9 billion. I want 2 billion to be billionaires. I don't want nothing less for myself or I, my people. That's why I was going to ask you as far as being such in, in rare space. What is, how does, who do you talk to? Like, I know obviously it's you and Jay, a few other people, but seeing it from the mountain as yeah. a parent, you're going to hit these obstacles. There's this fear that I have way bigger followers than me. To control of just like, love. talk about what you want to invest in and what you're doing. Damn, he gave him a million dollars. Yeah, they won't did his ass back. Hey, out. If we unify, but we got to truly, truly unify. We have to truly, truly start making decisions that support our communities. We can't think that there's a government grant that's going to come distribution. I can never. Okay, so it was kind of lightly talking about it. You never really fully talk about it. Do I have any other videos of him talking about it? I I'll play the 50 Cent thing in full, and then I'll, I'll try to get back to it. Um, This is a 50 Cent um episode, I believe. Highest rated show on that particular network. So it makes gives you the cachet that Hold on. Uh, kinda allowed me a little more leverage with the things. What'd you say? Yes. <laughs> I think this is a <laughs> And then it worked out. It worked out. Like, you know, and my audience, I like to say this, my core audience was in college during two thousand and three. Right? Yes. They here right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's it. And I love you. If you just made noise, I love you because without you, I wouldn't be successful. See? By the way, he was their big guest this year. Last year was Diddy. Same podcast. Shout out to Earn Your Leisure.
that that core, that noise that you heard from 03. Hold on. The things that go on, like the, the, they are conscious of finance now, Republicans. Is this true? So he done made some money. He said, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, one of the things we talk about, especially in this crowd, is access to capital, especially for black entrepreneurs, black business founders. In your space, money that comes from advertising. I wonder, do we face challenges the same way that entrepreneurs are facing when it comes to getting dollars from corporate? Well, initially, when I get into a, a, a new venture, I finance it. Like, I usually use my money to start. And then as we get into oh, about that whole situation, yeah, you run into, you have the experience with major corporations, like me, my particular experience with Beam Centauri, Oh, here we go. Here. Well, I went, so I want to talk about that, right? Sire, Sire Spirits. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Cognac and Le Chimie de Wash Champagne. I own the entire company. Like those, it's... Yeah. That's completely black owned. Well, I went, so I want to talk about that, right? Sire, Sire Spirits. Yeah. So, I right, Sire Spirits, completely black owned, like you said, liquor company. Talk about that, because I know you had challenges before that, right? So... Talk about that whole situation. Yeah, you run into, you have the experience with major corporations, like me, my particular experience with Beam Centauri, it was, uh, it was great in the beginning. It's great for us to work for them. Mm. It is not so cool when you start to own things. You see what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money with them too. Like there's a point, they, they did a deal that mirrored what Puffy's deal with Diageo was for Syrah. So he didn't have ownership of that at any point, but he was getting a lot of money, like almost like $60 million a year at, at one point. So when uh, you see him go to Daily On is when you see him have some issues. <laughs> and they're not. It gets bad. You know, and these people have really strong relationships. Don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case faster because he's making that them uncomfortable. That's a big part of it. You know what I mean? Like you look, when you go to the spirits business is, it's, it's not governed. They got a discus board that they created, right? If you got two companies that are. Uh... I like to pause that and give, and, and give some, um, some context. It's not the first time I've heard that. And I could pull up another interview if you want me to. I'll, I'll go through the time to find it and pull it up. Um, and obviously, I, I think your initial reaction would be like, well, actually, you're pulling up shitty people. Martin Shkreli said the same thing. Martin Shkreli said what happened was the way we were impacting this market started messing with a lot of people who had a lot of you know, financial stake in the game. And he said, what usually happens is all these companies have the best law firms known to man. And if you know anything about law, a lot of times you're a gen if you're a top company, your general counsel used to probably be working for the SEC or working for maybe some federal agency before they really got the bag in their private practice being your general counsel. And it's one of those things where if if you're that big company and you say, yo, this guy Diddy or this guy Marcius Crelly is giving me hell. They say that to their general counsel who makes a call to the U.S. attorney who says, oh, we'll open up an investigation. And if you kind of realize at a point, if, if, if you got a lot of shit going on, we, we've heard all type of charges. The they could find some charge to get you down on. And this kind of seems about to be what a thing, right? If, if we're believing 50, you start barking up the, the tree of Diageo. All of a sudden, there's investigations that pop off. Now, we can't dismiss the Cassie thing, right? But still, you start barking up that tree, a lot of different things and investigations start falling um, down. So let me keep playing. Uh, Three billion dollars a year, and Beam Centauria and Diageo, the the distribution level is very hard for 
you to get things to a point where you can do the numbers, the right numbers, the amount. So it's kind of like they, they provide, they incentivize the sales force by giving them box bonuses. And then when you sell a product, you get the bonuses off the boxes that's there. But you make that no matter what product you're selling. So if, if you sell Hennessy or Remy out the gate, they start to put downward pressure on the new companies. You see, I had a lawsuit with Remy. With Remy. They said that because I had an oval-shaped bottle that uh, there was some sort of product confusion, and I'm like, where? It's a big B in the middle of the fucking bottle. Like, you, you don't own the shape, the, the, the whole shape of the bottle. You know? And then we had went in there for a little while until it came, uh, you know, I started saying shit like, uh, 1738, I bet they had slaves. Then shit got uncomfortable, and it was like, look, 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 relax, okay? <laughs> Can we make donations to existing foundations to make you feel happy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 it kind of it went away. But, but they do spend $63 million targeting African-American male consumers a year. It's interesting to watch 50 even say this because 50 is clearly like Diddy's biggest op, right? Like publicly. And um, w watching him kind of even admit that, yo, shit, a lot of this shit that's happening to you right now. I, number one, I don't think he's it's cause he's saying this because he gives a fuck about Diddy. I think he sees that now he's about to bark up some trees. Because you do realize that 50, he's been pretty impervious, but he's kind of stuck within the... Um, the confines of all these companies. We've seen him when he did try to get into the headphone business with Sleek. We saw how that happened. Yeah, he sued them, but he ain't really make the dent. Um, the, his biggest deal was probably vitamin water. Okay, cool, but Coca-Cola, he didn't directly go against Coca-Cola. He hasn't really necessarily gone up against like some of these behemoths as we're seeing Jay-Z has done, which, by the way, I think Jay-Z is the only person who could probably say he's been you know, successful from a takedown or or been impervious to a takedown. Remember, Jay-Z went against Apple Music and Spotify with title, right? And even if, you know, I still believe that, you know, he, you know, was pimping culture to get us to fuck with him. Shit, he was getting at their bottom line, their market share. And if we're believing 50 here, where it's like, yo, if you fuck with people's bottom line and market share, they might just get a criminal case be, you know, get you investigated for a criminal case and maybe even charge. Jay, Jay seemed to avoid that. But but also, we, we got to point out that Jay started aligning himself with a lot of white men who are also very powerful. The Michael Rubens, the um, Jack Dorsey's, like, that's his crowd. He's not hanging with a bunch of niggas no more, right? And, and maybe, you know, maybe Diddy was just out of line. But I do think the reason why he doesn't just throw Diddy under the bus is that, well, Ain't 50 going to Shreveport to try to build a movie studio? Don't we say more than even the music business, the film entertainment business, the TV, like that business is really controlled? And God knows what maybe they've tried to do with Tyler Perry, but do you think they want somebody like 50 now, you know, being the sole production company that's sending the most, the majority of um, films, whether it be cultural or not to platforms like stars or maybe even other like streaming platforms at this point no so i do think you know diddy's thinking about his own mortality because if you believe this at all you don't think they're coming for you you're trying to make the bill where 50 is that he's trying to make the billion dollar play jay ben made the billion dollar play jay's a billionaire diddy ben made the billion dollar play right kanye made the billion dollar play but he stepped out of line they claim he's no longer a billionaire 50 he realizes his turn. He's making the billion dollar play. So I think this is why he doesn't just completely be like, yo, Diddy, what's up? Like, of course, he doesn't like the guy. But I think his satisfaction is in the fact that Diddy's in jail and can't fuck his baby mamas no more. I think that's his satisfaction. But this other stuff that's happening, I think he has to be smart enough to realize, well, if you believe any of that, you realize that they're coming for you next, right? Remy, Remy, specifically. You know, so by the way, some people say Ice Cube shit, you know, Ice Cube didn't really fully all the way get the big three where it needs to get. But shit, 
I can imagine what Ice Cube's been fending off as well. That's why that would be uncomfortable, me making those statements. And it's risk versus reward. It doesn't make sense to fight the fight. So they said, let's just let that go. You know? But, you know, they, they kind of, they ripped me off too, man. God damn it. <laughs> they did. They ripped me off. Because one of the head guys is the, the head of sales for being Victoria. They set up a play and... Uh, they were able to send a letterhead from Beep Centauri over to to France and get the champagne company to commit to coming out and talking to them. And they have these things like it's a, a where you put agency fees, like someone who contacted your your grower or a person who's producing the cognac for you and made the deal for you. And they they put agency fees on the product. To, to give you an example of the scheme that they put together, it's like. Say you wanted to sell t-shirts and I go to China for you. And I tell the people in China, how much can you make the shirt for? And they tell me $4. And then I come back and I tell you, yo, they said $8. And then every time you send the check to the producer, they just put $4 on the side for, for them every time. So they, they, they siphoned off about six million dollars from me in the very beginning, and then um, it uh, the legal fees has been almost a whole nother almost ten million dollars. So again, just, you know, Fifty's going through it too. He's trying to do something, and you got to always give these guys credit. Um, they're trying to create an infrastructure. That is a billion dollar uh, uh, um, empire that is entirely black owned and possibly independent. That threatens a lot of market share. And you got to imagine what could come from that. Obviously, Todd Perry has done it successfully. But then, you know, you have the 50s who's trying and I think he's going to go through it, too. You know, 50, you know, this is why I think 50s. I think 50 going to start toning down some of the rhetoric online. He's not going to be as petty. I think his last petty shit was Diddy. His last petty shit, if you ask me. But the more he gets involved, because here's the thing. 50 has to interact with politics to get the town to approve certain shit. He's 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 influencing. He's trying to bring up the, the even the, the downtown area of Shreveport because he wants to turn where he's building an, a, an empire into a really thriving community. He's already gotten, you know what I mean, um, not the key, but I think he got like some type of acknowledgement from the city. So, again, he doesn't want to keep doing the bullshit. If you ask me, I would be shocked if he's still doing the super petty shit. Um, this is his billion-dollar play. It is what it is. And from what I'm hearing, when an African-American person tries to do an independent billion-dollar play or tries to be free of the institution, it's cool while you're a billionaire with them because Diddy was a billionaire with Diageo. When he started saying, nah, what's up with this? You're going to jail. Uh, um. Kanye was a billionaire with Adidas. The moment he started saying, fuck y'all, he got no more deals. You get what I'm saying? Um, again, not saying this is absolute fact, but things we should think about, right? I seen something pop up, and I want to clear up a few things. Uh, I seen this pop up recently. Somebody says, Sean Diddy Combs PR Natalie uh, Moore has silently quit after over 20 years in the wake of his arrest. I'll read the, the story it says Natalie Moore, who's been the head of communications for Diddy Multimedia Empire, has reportedly quit amid, amid the fallout from his arrest. Known, known for her loyalty, I can't read, and on wavering support, she has been a cornerstone of Diddy's brand transformation from a bad boy rapper to a polished entrepreneur. She managed PR for his ventures, including clothing line, fragrance collections, and most recently was a voice behind the denials of serious allegations he now faces. More met. Um, combs while wet now. Okay. Now, is this true? I'm guessing it's true. I, apparently, it was on Baller Alert. Is this true? Let me see. It probably is true. It probably is true. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, so Baller did did respond to it. Uh man. In reality, just just, just here's the fact. And this is my whole whole problem with the Diddy thing. And I guess this is why he does need PR. He probably gets got another PR. Her PR is probably, you know, with all due respect, most for, you know, entertainment. 
Right now, he needs criminal PR, right? He needs criminal PR for what he got going through. Um, and also, here's the thing, too. Did he not being free means a lot of people are going to get fired. Hey, your job is no longer needed in certain capacities. If your job was to promote, if you're the PR for revolt for his businesses, right now it's not about his businesses, it's about his freedom. So what's going to happen is that we're going to see people who we're going to consider essential get fired or almost like get told that they got to resign and, you know, that's the better way to let people go. And we're going to think that, you know, it's Diddy in crisis or what? No, it's just, bro, the only thing that's on his mind is how to get out of a fucking cell. Right. So why the fuck are you going to pay a PR company to just put out whatever and, and shit like clearly whatever PR they did didn't do much. You, land, you got landed in jail. So with all due respect to this person, he needs to save that money for his legal team. Like, fuck what people are saying about you at this point. Just get out. So uh, I would imagine. Listen, I would imagine half of Combs Enterprise um, are getting we're getting um, fired. That, that's going to be a fact. And by the way, you know, I know that's going to be true because I think Didi and his team owe me like 10 grand. Like, I don't even, after I seen all them lawsuits, I didn't even ask for it no more. Real talk. They owe me, uh, what they owe me money for? It was some Ciroc shit. Um, and low key was my fault because I should have submitted the invoice earlier. But once, like, I'm just not an asshole too. Like, once I seen the niggas starting to get railroaded with all type of shit, I'm like, oh, he's in a whole heap of problems. Yeah, after that, I'm like, Bro, I look like a dick. Be like, yo, yo, where's my 10 grand? Nah, bro, I think Combs Enterprise, like, shut down anyway. I don't even know what they got going on. Like, they're not paying niggas out, right? So I'm like, bro, just focus on on all your resources and trying to get the guy out or trying to make sure he's good. Yeah, everybody from there, y'all getting fired. I should have collected my money. I'm not getting paid. It's cool. Like, it's, like, it's, it's a game. Like, I'm, I'm not tripping, right? But... You're going to see these news and it's going to look crazy. It ain't crazy. Diddy saving money. Oh, y'all fired. Y'all got, hey, you used to just be over there. You're managing bad boy records. There ain't no bad boy records now. You're fired. Everybody's fired. Everybody's fired. That's what it is. Everybody's fired. Okay. Diddy has to focus on his freedom. That's it. Okay. Maybe if he gets back in a position later on in life, five years, 10 years, maybe. But even then it's like, come on, it's over, bro. Like it's over. It's over. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no, chat, like, I remember, I remember, yo, they, the last email between me and them, they were like, yo, are you going to send the invoice? And usually me, I've mad outstanding invoices for everybody. I keep telling you, I tax everybody in the game. Um, so I'm like, ah, whatever. I was, I was like lagging on it. And then I seen the Cassie lawsuit and I was like, probably a good time to like, but I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever. I'm thinking it's going to get better. Then it increasingly got worse to then people thought, oh, no, he's going to get locked up. And I'm like, yeah, it's no way they're paying out now. It's like, for what? Yeah. Now, granted, I could sue them, but who, who gives a fuck, man? Who cares? Like, I'm just not fucking petty ass. <laughs> You're a nigga fighting for his life. You're like, yo, give me my 10 grand. Nah, hell out of here. But yeah, yeah, this is what it is. So all y'all niggas who work for Diddy, y'all fired. All y'all fired. There's, there's nothing. He's not in crisis. He just no need to pay y'all no more. But, you know, obviously I have to blame him because he's now in trouble, which has fucked up the business, which means he can't keep paying y'all. So go get another job. That's what that means. OK, that's it. I'm not mad. Somebody says, uh, uh, you said, well, uh, I get the money back. Let me tell you how I work. You know, I got receipts for everything. If the nigga ever land on his feet, you know, what I mean, and I don't even want the money at this point. Yo, I need A, B, C or D. Maybe a favor, which I don't know if Diddy would be a pause on the favor. But, uh, yeah, I'm not that money hungry like that. It's all good. Listen, man, keep that 10K throw to that nigga fucking defense fee, bro. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, Extra TV, y'all fucked up recently. Extra, y'all looking bad. If this was Big Act that got it wrong, they would have been saying it's a problem. So if you guys don't know, uh, Extra ran an article saying... That Diddy's late ex, Kim Porter, revealed his twisted secrets in an alleged diary that is now going to be turned to a memoir. We've heard allegations of that consistently. All informed parties have all said they have no proof that, that Diddy's late ex, Kim Porter, 
ever had a book that was already written that was exposing him or a memoir or a diary. So I seen extra post it on their Instagram page. I seen I'll be sure later then uh, I could show you they deleted it by the way. I'll be sure later uh, um you know comment to basically saying if there's smoke there's fire. What I've realized, you know, Diddy definitely still got some people, which is, I think it's a PR, well, not PR, but, well, probably his new PR, which is a criminal PR at this point. They reached out and clearly got these guys to take it down because if you click on this extra article right here, if you click on it, it, it goes to page not found, which means they realized they put up cap, which means Diddy's team somehow hit him up. Like, yo, fuck, fuck, nigga, stop playing with my name, man. Like, I know I'm already in hot water, but put factual stuff out so um they have removed that from their website and also the post cannot be found on their instagram page anymore and yes i'll be sure was under there which ironically you could tell i'll be sure been waiting to see the, fa the fall of diddy and hey it is what it is okay so it's, that got deleted so for people who wonder if there's a memoir for kim porter coming out nah uh there's just no proof that she had a hidden memoir somewhere that her friends or family had access to and that's going to be still very important okay all right cool we're not done we're not done by the way we're, we're far from being done where are we at right now six hours and 23 minutes yeah i think y'all can hang out with me for another like two hours or so right yeah we're, we're not all diddy diddy and out so we we just got to do these other topics all right cool 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 Give me a second. Give me a second. All right. Uh, I do know you guys want to talk about these music executives stepping down. Actually, I might get into that next. Let me just see if. This... Oh, I did want to point this out. Hey, feds, man. Wait, is this? What the fuck? This got deleted? Why is everybody deleting shit? You want to say it, Chad? Yo, chat, man. Yo, everybody know I'm anti-snitching, but if y'all really want to know the real truth about Diddy, man, fans find this nigga, man. Y'all find him, y'all find the whole truth, bro. Ain't no way this nigga been that quiet. That nigga was whole. That nigga was holding umbrellas over Diddy's head while this shit was sunny as hell outside. Look how this nigga looking at him like nigga. This nigga be doing too much. Exactly. This nigga. Should he should be witness numero uno, nigga? If you want to know the truth, he's seen everything, nigga. He looked like he was lathering them up with the baby all gang. So if he not say nothing, yeah. Anyway, all right, all right, all right. Uh, remember that IV video? I found it off stream. Remember the video? This is actually an interesting video. This is a video of Diddy getting an IV. Wait, why is this? No, right there. This is a video of Diddy getting an IV. After a freak off, ironically, who is he with, though? He's with his mom. So he was getting these IVs in front of his mama. Mom's is good. Well, let me... I think this is the IV pole right here. should do shit out to my mom. Call mom Dukes. Hi. So he's getting an IV and chilling with the mom. So you got to imagine, you, you know niggas chill with their mom on Sundays. It's got to be a Sunday. So it was a Saturday night freak off that he's kicking with his mom on a Sunday. You know what I mean? She's getting a drip with me. She's hydrating. Oh, never mind. Oh shit. He said mama was getting the the the, the IV as well. <laughs> I wonder if his mom looks at him and be like, yo, son, why you be getting this shit? What's up, mom? Everything's good, baby. I'm here with you. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. Okay. Mom. Oh. Freshly dipped though. <laughs> I, I was just trying to show you shoes. <laughs> yeah, my mom's a single. Mom's a single. I ain't gonna hate on my mom's. She's single. Me and my mom talked about one time doing a dating show, but 
she's so picky. <laughs> she's so picky, they don't stand. But yeah, that'll be the funniest show in the world. It will be. <laughs> that shit will be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to get started if she was doing that. We're not doing that. Cause <laughs> but yeah, my mom's single. Yeah, for real. Mom do know how to have a good time. She ain't sitting in the house playing. The outside moving and shaking, baby. She come with me to strip club. I don't care. For real. It's my dog. You know, I want to live life. Yo, imagine... Imagine Diddy got his mom on uh, one of them episodes 20v1 or the popping balloon joints. Y'all here moving and grooving. So my mom told me, she just said, keep moving, baby. That's right. Keep moving. She Don't stop. She could touch, she could touch um, the floor with her palms, you know? <laughs> Floor with her palms. <laughs> my mom told me she just said, "Keep moving, baby." That's right. Keep moving. She don't stop. She could touch. She could touch um, the floor with her palms. You know. Flat. Flat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take pew pew pew. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't watch the full clip before I played it. I'm not. I was even trying to like <laughs> make this anything. Uh, all right, moving on. <laughs> let's just move on. Yeah, let's move on. Okay. Okay, let's move on. God damn. All right. Um. Cool. What did we want to get into? Hold on, we played that already. Give me one second. I'm just seeing. You know the guards. That's all it is. Like they stayed around. They played the game a little too long, and this is how God works. It's like hip hop is independent. You know the music is independent. The owning of your masters is independent. It's a, it's, a, it's a new changing of the guard, and all the old parasites is just falling off one by one because they never had talent. They just leashed on to the talent. Let me tell you what Puffy was and what a lot of them is. They mediators. What they call them mediators, right? Uh, where you got to go, they go betweens. So you got the, you got the Leos who, who scared to, to approach the, the thugs like that. But Diddy from that world, so I could intermediate. I could get percentages from negotiating and making this deal, but you got to give up that butt. Whoa. You got to give up that butt. Whoa. Wait, what? Wait, whoa. Nigga, what? <laughs> nah, stop. Wait, how'd that come into the negotiation? The, the thugs like that. But Diddy from that world, so I could intermediate. I could get percentages from negotiating and making this deal. But you got to give up that butt. You got to give up that butt and royalties. And I could change your family life. Know why? Because he had to give up that butt. People don't understand. That's the reason. That's why it's the reason Puffy don't want to give nobody any artist he deal with. He tell you, I ain't gonna. I'm make it hard for you. Yeah, I had to do this. I had, he wants you to endure. He endured, and I felt bad in a sense because he was only trying to feed his family. You get what I'm saying? And he became a victim, and it turned him into a monster just trying to hide his own secrets and not living his truth. And now he in prison just from the, all this. All this comes from. One man not living his truth. I swear to God, had Puffy just been who he is at heart, it might have been a few jokes. We joked about RuPaul. He's still a boss. You get what I'm saying? I feel bad for the people that got hurt trying to hide his secrets. All the people that have been victimized, all the people that have been uh, uh, put under the influence so they don't remember certain things because of who he is. And as long as you're under the influence, it ruins your credibility of speaking about anything. So I can understand why he kept probably kept drugs in the party. You get what I'm saying? All this is all this behavior falls in line behind one thing, trying to hide secrets. So now you gotta cut use this to cover that. And now this makes you cover for that. And it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. It never stops. It's a cycle. Hmm. 
Freddie P has been pretty consistent, but, but it looked like he's also going down a rabbit hole a little bit of he believes that Diddy's behaviors. And here's the only thing, though, and I guess I would ask Freddie P this. I would, I would actually interview him. Are, are you? I get it. He fucked over the band in the Isle of I, I I interviewed Elliot Ness, even though I don't think he's that salty, but I don't know if he, he he allows y'all to see him in any of these freak golfs or freaky behavior. Maybe I saw him like being violent to like maybe a significant other of his at the time, but I don't think he was. You know, um, did Freddie P ever say he he saw Diddy doing some gay shit? I don't think that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of people who've been around Diddy that never seen him in in, in intimate moments, right? Like, I think Diddy was at least smart enough to realize like. I have to have some type of trust for me to showcase certain sides of me, myself, which would include maybe a possible bisexual or homosexual side or possibly an abusive side, right? Uh, consequence speaking about, well. Good. Good. I wanted to ask, I mean, you've been in the industry for a long time. A lot of people are talking about Diddy getting arrested. Right. I mean, is it shocking that he got arrested or was it just about time before all this kind of like, you know, caught up to him? I mean, you know, I think that's in the in the hands of whoever's weighing it or whatever, you know what I mean? I mean, for the culture, I think the culture's in shock. Mm -hmm. um, although we kind of seen this playing out in real time, it's still Diddy's in the tombs in, in Manhattan. I mean, in Brooklyn, my bad. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff that I know, like I knew a lot of stuff that came out this week we was talking about. I was like, man, I've been knew that. I've been knew about the girl that came out. She was just afraid to tell her story for a long time. Like I knew, sir, when you were in a circle, like the band is like a, you know what I'm saying? So things that transpired in their band, they because they work with people that we worked with, you know what I'm saying? It gets back to us. And not only that, I don't been on the phone call and hear people explaining their situations, explain, crying about, you know, uh, situations. And it only gonna get worse. Like I was telling people, like I, I um, it's hard to say because I don't want to spoil what's coming up. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to. I just want to say this, like I said. It get it gets deeper and deeper, and the more the more that come out, the more intriguing the story gonna be. All I want to tell people is, when that Netflix series come out, it's a rapper coming out with a Netflix series. I won't say no name. I don't want to spoil it for him. I don't. I'm not a friend of his. I don't want to, you know, um, um, spoil something he got going on. But I will say this: he's doing a. F wait, did he? Wait, Fifty really sold a a, a Netflix series to. Oh my God, 50 is really a demon, bro. Phenomenal job to the point where I was in awe. You get what I'm saying? I was presented the opportunity to work with him, but you know, like I said, the money wasn't enough for me to leave my couch. But he doing a phenomenal job, man. There's so many people that's hurt behind this. There's so many people that got, t so many, it's guys that will not, that can't come out because of their image. You know what I'm saying? It's that'll make your eyes go. Like, whoa, I know about I know about the slams, the, the Stevie J's. I know you've been, I know, the, you know, I'm in a circle. I know about y'all, y'all confirm. You don't got, but see, even with Stevie J, you know, when you got secrets out there. Wait, Stevie J's gay? What? Of a lifestyle and you know you, the lifestyle you really live in, it's a community out there that really know you. You can't hide from them. You can come play tough to us because we don't hear nothing about it. We don't hang around the same crowds. They know you. They know what you and Puffy was going on. Not just Stevie J. I'm just saying anybody. If you're in that community and you're trying to hide something, you can hide it from the street dudes and the, and the thugs and the regular, but they know you. And that's what a lot of rappers was facing. So as everybody knows, Diddy, a.k.a. The Diddler, he has finally been locked up. And it's been crazy ever since. I'm not going to lie. Now, you feel me? He's in prison. Or, let me rephrase, jail. On suicide watch. You feel me? That's kind of a crazy life. You go from being a billionaire, mansions all over the world, having free calls. You feel me? With women and men. You feel me? Thousand bottles of uh, baby oil. Man... 
even though I do think Diddy is very, 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 very guilty, I want to ask one thing. If what Diddy did is considered sex trafficking, isn't like what every like high profile entertainer who like fly women from Instagram, like all over just for sex, sex trafficking as well? Like, that's a question I just want to ask. You feel me? Because you got to call a spade a spade. If Diddy's doing it, then you got to look at air, almost every celebrity who does the same thing or who throws big, big parties and you feel me? Women pull up and they do crazy, freaky stuff at those parties, bro. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> so, like, and I only ask that because I really sat there and think. And thought to myself, like, man, I don't necessarily feel bad for Diddy, but, and I don't think Diddy is a good person. And I think he probably, if, when they really investigate deeper into Diddy, they're going to find way other stuff besides all this freak stuff that he probably did do. Man, this freaky stuff and all the allegations and stuff, like how you see all the executives and stuff stepping down. Diddy is coming, bro. I, I no, no Diddy. But Diddy is coming, no Diddy. I think he's going to expose everyone. And, like, labels are scared and they're trying to get rid of everyone and everything. If Diddy ends up like the dude, the who's that one dude with the island who killed himself? If Diddy ends up like that, we should not sit there and act surprised. You feel me? But it's your boy, Big Act News. Make sure you like, come subscribe. I'd say pray for Diddy. Honestly, pray for Diddy, man. He probably needs it right now. He's probably feeling, probably Meat Mills on the phone with him, trying to keep him calm. You feel me? He's probably telling Meat Mills, send me some pics over. You feel me? I miss you. I like when you do it like that. But if you feel me, it's your boy, Big Actors. Make sure you like him, subscribe, and I am out.